preserving and sharing the history of Herkimer County since 1896. The Herkimer County Historical Society and Herkimer County Community College present Climbing Your Family Tree. Local news director and anchor Steve McMurray was invited to climb his family tree and discover his Herkimer County heritage. Uh, I know my mother, uh, my mother's side is from Herkimer County predominantly. My father's from West Virginia. My mother uh, is from, uh, she was born in Frankfurt, lived there all her life. Um, I believe her mother's side uh, is, uh, I want to say perhaps Schuyler, um, Herkimer type area. Not sure about her father's side, but I'm pretty sure they were local as well. So I guess that's all I have to impart to you at this point. Wow. Uh, other than you'll have to go to uh, visit Fort Clark to find out the rest of that. Driven, time. that's right, driven by it several times. I have to stop in. Fort Clock is located near the center of the historic Mohawk Valley near St. Johnsville, built by Palatine German immigrant Johannes Clock in 1750. In 1973, it was designated a National Historic Landmark. Fort Clock Historic Restoration owns and operates the restored original house on a 30-acre complex. On October 19, 1780, on a battleground known as Clock's Field just to the east of Fort Clock, the militia under General Robert Van Rensselaer attacked Sir Johnson's mixed force of raiders. During the battle, inhabitants in the area took refuge at Fort Clock. Today, the site is open to visitors from Memorial Day to Columbus Day. Hello. Welcome home, grandson. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> wow. Steve, it's so good to have you at finally come home. Oh, thank this you. This is your family home. That's what I'm being told. Very yes. Nice. So, and I especially wanted to show this to you. You have a coat of arms. Okay. And uh, this coat of arms is from 1450 oh, wow. okay. in Germany. And what happened was uh, a princess was abduct uh, abducted and uh, her, her father said that, he, that she could marry any man that could find her and bring her back home. So okay. uh, Mr. Clock went and he found her and brought her back. And when the prince asked him what regiment he was with, and well, in other words, was he an important man or not? And he wasn't, he was just a common just man. Just a common man. And uh, he said, you have to take me as I am. And the princess said, I will. And they were married, and that was the beginning of that clock family. Okay. And this, is a painting that was done by Grandma Clock. Okay. And it was done in the late 1800s, but she did the painting as the site looked before the railroad came through. And this is the King's Highway, which went Behind. down here okay. in front of the fort. And the railroad is, is in that area. Okay. So, but that's her concept of uh, what the building looked like to her when she was a little girl. Now, Anna Elizabeth Clock would have been your sixth great grandmother. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna trust you on that. That's yeah. going back. Six. Okay, that's going back quite sure. a ways. Well, she was uh, born in 1733, wow. and Anna was the oldest of eight children. They had a lot of children uh, back. Yeah, then. that's that's what it seems every yeah. along the line. No, eight, ten, no, or a couple no, years, seventeen. No TV, you know. No. <laughs> born of Johannes Clock, who was your many great grandfather. You, you have a direct line to Johannes. Okay. And he was the son of uh, Heinrich, sometimes called Hendrik Clock, 
who uh, immigrated with his family to this country over 300 years ago. Uh, the coming year, we're celebrating over 300 years of the, the Palatines coming to America. Wow. You know, the Palatines were as important to New York State as the Pilgrims were to New England. Okay, I've heard and that. So, this is the Harrison patent and of the uh, land from East Canada Creek to Nelliston. Okay. And yep. it was bought of the Indians in 1722. Okay. And so East uh, Canada, is that, is that where the um, where Beardsley is? That's yeah. the creek that comes mm -hmm. out. So basically it's from Beardsley to Nelliston. Okay. Uh, and another thing, uh, the English, they kept the German Palatines in this area because we were the, the, the buffer. Okay. Against the wilderness. The wilderness was from like where uh, Beardsley's is, okay. west. Right, right. Back at, at that uh, time. When the uh, Tryon County muzzle loaders started to restore these buildings that had been empty for many years, mm -hmm. vandals had got in, sure. and uh, the building was falling apart. And this, in 1954, they started restoration, and the first building they did was this. Was this original? Okay. And uh, I'm interested in the schoolhouse because I'm the school marm when we have our special events. Okay. And uh, I'm the meanest teacher in the valley. Uh oh. And you better have your homework done. <laughs> yes, yes, ma'am. And our blacksmith shop uh, was uh, finally restored in, in uh, 1980. And so that's it's very important because, uh, you know, uh, the blacksmith was very important back in those days because, uh, well, there was no Walmart <laughs> close by, right. and uh, we truly walk in the footsteps of giants. Oh, I, you, you when know. you go, I mean, it, it is amazing because it all started right, I mean, right. Yeah. we talked about right along the river, right. and so the fact that, we, that I'm able to go back that far is, right. is yes. fascinating, yeah. it really is, wow. And Steve, this is for you. Well, thank you very much. Nice. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. Oh, here's your cousin, David Clock. Oh, okay. And he has some things he'd like Hi, to show you. How you doing, David? Nice to meet you. One of the things I do, I give tours here at the Ford. I've been doing it about six years now. Uh, I'm from, actually from Michigan. Okay. And did my genealogy research, traced my ancestry back here. Uh, decided to come out and see the place, fell in love with it, and actually uh, worked my way up to becoming the site interpreter here. Okay. And one of the things I do is genealogy, and what I wanted to show you is this book. Oh my goodness. Is about half of what I got on my computer. Oh boy. I did boy. this about five years ago. <laughs> if I printed one out today, you need a hand it truck would be, two, yeah, <laughs> be over 2,000 pages. Oh my goodness. But I did do a little bit on your particular line. Okay. We both go back to Johanna's clock. Okay. And uh, I go back to Johannes' son, John, and you go back to uh, Anna Elizabeth Clark. Okay. And Anna Elizabeth married George Zimmerman. Also, I've got a story I'd like to tell you over in the other room okay. about uh, what happened here at the fort on October 19, 1780. 17? All right, let's go take a look. Wow. And, <laughs> and like I say, yeah, it's a lot more. Well, Fort Clock was built in 1750 by Johannes Clock. Now, the clocks came from the Rhine region of Germany. Okay. Now, there's a lot of wars going on in Germany between France and Spain, and Germany was constantly being invaded by one group or the other. And Johannes, because of all these, or Hendricks, because of all these wars, brought his family over here to try to escape from all these wars. And I think it's kind of ironic that uh, the clocks came over here to escape warfare, only to become involved in the French and Indian War and the American Revolution. Right. But they left Germany to escape it. And uh, when Johannes built this house in 1750, he built it with defense in mind. He knew that trouble was on the horizon. And so what he did is he loopholed his home. He loopholed it in order so that he could defend it. He put holes through the walls. Now the walls are two foot thick windows, they would have had two inch thick wooden shutters. Mm. And so once you shuttered the windows and you locked your doors, you have, you'd have 35 holes in this building all the way around the building 
what you had is you had a fort. It's actually a fortified homestead built for defense by Johannes Clark, so he could defend his family. And on October 19, 1780, he had the opportunity and the necessity to defend his family. People were gathered here in this house, and a musket ball went through a loophole upstairs. It ricocheted off that loophole and hit a woman in the head. Oh, wow. Gave her a nasty headache, but she survived it. Okay. Now, on that same day, John Leonard Krauss was in this room. And uh, John Leonard Krauss was a, a militia man, and he was married to Johannes, another daughter of Johannes. Okay. And uh, while he was in here, he seen a British officer ride his horse in front of the house. Now, he grabbed his musket and shot and killed that British officer right out front of the house. Right. The horse ran back up this way, and he tied the horse up, kept the horse, the saddle, and everything off that horse as his own personal belongings. Uh, I guess the officer didn't need it anymore, <laughs> and so he kept all that stuff. Okay. Now, what we have in the house is that bucket over there that's on the wall. Okay. That bucket came off the horse of the British officer that was killed outside in front of the house wow. in 1780. <laughs> And uh, what I wanted to show you is the type of weapon they would have used back then. This is called a brown bess. Okay. And it would have been the type of musket they would have used back then. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a little shot out that window there. Okay. Or door. Sort of reenact what, uh, what would have happened when the British on October. Was coming up. Okay. Now, in order to fire it, we have to put a little powder on the pan. What you do, go ahead and get on that side. You pull the hammer back to the next click. Okay, and then aim. Is this a big kickback? Or? Nope, there's no kick at all. <laughs> all right, so he's potentially coming across where the railroad tracks are. Yeah. And, and he doesn't. Got him. Man. <laughs> wow. It's a lot of fun. Just for fun, Steve takes one more shot. here at one of the four clock cemeteries in St. Johnsville and over there is the grave of Johannes Clock, our ancestor. Okay. Over there is the grave of Hendrix Clock, one of the first, you know, the first clock of our family that came to this country in, in uh, 1710. He was actually born in 1663, came over here as an old man. He was close to 50 when he came over here. When he flooded, right. And when he left the homeland of Germany and uh, lived to be 97. Wow. Had three wives, outlived his last wife by 15 years. <laughs> had children with all three of his wives. Oh, wow. So he was quite a gentleman. Yes. <laughs> quite a history. When people trace back their genealogy, they often think that it started at Ellis Island, and that's you know that's sort of what I figured. But now, after this process, after this few weeks, uh, 
you know, I knew I had relatives in Schuyler, but you know, this went all the way down the Mohawk River, and now you know, here we are at four o'clock with a date of 1750. I mean, it's baffling, it really is, when you think about uh, the fact that the earliest settlers of, uh, of the Mohawk Valley, uh, that I'm tied into them, go right down that lineage, uh, generation after generation after generation. So to be part of that lineage uh, is, uh, is humbling, number one, um, but it's also uh, just amazing uh, when you think about it. And it's, uh, so this, this process has been everything I've, uh, I've thought it would be and, and then some. So it's just, it's been an amazing, amazing few weeks.